Um, I now take great pleasure in introducing Judge Jin Hin Peck. Um, he served as the president of the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea from 2017 to 2020, and he has been a member of the tribunal since 2009. Prior to joining ITLOS, Judge Peck has had an extensive experience in academia in Korea and other countries and has served advisory roles with the Korean delegation to the UN and other international fora. Without further ado, may I please pass the virtual mic to Judge Peck? Thank you, Tara. Uh, Ambassador Tommy Cole, Professor Joya Kuma, Professor Nilufa Oral, dear colleagues, it gives me great pleasure to deliver a keynote speech in 2021 International Law Years in Review organized by the Center for International Law. It has been a year since the model agreement between Singapore and ITLOS was signed on 11th June last year. At that time, I planned to visit Singapore to attend a signing ceremony to celebrate the successful completion of our joint endeavor but the COVID-19 pandemic prevented me from making that trip. Instead, His Excellency, Mr. Shamugam and myself signed this historic agreement at the virtual ceremony. Now, one year later, the pandemic situation is still uncertain around the world. Although fortunately, things are slowly moving back to normal, at least in some parts of the world. Dear colleagues, uh, not many people know that Singapore ITLOS model agreement was a product of intensive preparation and efforts of more than a decade. Even fewer people fully appreciate the significance of the model agreement for international judicial practice. Therefore, I'm pleased to have this opportunity to share with you how the model agreement came about and reflect a little bit on the significance and implications of the model agreement for the future of international judicial proceedings. Article one, paragraph two of the statute of the tribunal provides that, quote, the seat of the tribunal shall be in the free and Hanseatic city of Hamburg in the Federal Republic of Germany, end of quote. However, paragraph three of the same article provides that, quote, the tribunal may sit and exercise its functions elsewhere whenever it considers this desirable, end of quote. In addition, article 70 of the rules of the tribunal provides that, quote, the tribunal may, if it considers it desirable, decide pursuant to Article 1, Paragraph 3 of the statute, that all or part of the further proceedings in a case shall be held at a place other than the seat of the tribunal. Before so deciding, it shall ascertain the views of the parties." End of quote. These provisions are closely modeled upon the equivalent provisions of the statute and rules of International Court of Justice, namely Article 22, Paragraph 1 of the Statute and Article 55 of the Rules. Thus, the statute of the ITLOS provides the tribunal with an option to function in places other than at its headquarters. Several things are clear from these provisions. First, Exercising the option of sitting elsewhere is the decision of the tribunal. Second, this option may be exercised only in a particular case after ascertaining the views of the parties. Third, this option applies to further proceedings in a case which refer to the proceedings that take place after the closure of written proceedings, such as oral proceedings. Fourth, the tribunal exercises this option whenever it considers desirable. Thus, it appears that the tribunal has certain latitude in deciding to function elsewhere. ICJ once expressed its view with respect to 
relevant factors to be considered in making such decision. In the memorandum submitted by the ICJ to the United Nations General Assembly in 1969, on the question of the seat of the court, it referred to, quote, consideration of the convenience of the parties and of the effective administration of its justice functions, end of quote, in making a decision on other venues. Similarly, the 2015 joint declaration between Singapore and ITLOS refers to facilitating access to the tribunal in order to serve the needs of the states of a particular region and a place convenient to the parties. Fifth, although it is not mentioned in the statute or rules, it is equally clear that for the tribunal to function elsewhere, some basic arrangements, legal, institutional, and practical, establishing the terms and conditions relating to the presence of the tribunal must be made with any prospective host nations so that tribunal can carry out its function effectively and independently. Such arrangement may include, among others, provisions of facilities and logistical support, immunity of the tribunal, its property, assets and funds, and privilege and immunity of members and officials of the tribunal. Without making arrangements for these matters in advance, it would not be possible that tribunal exercise its function in places other than its seat with which tribunal already has headquarter agreement. Moreover, considering the nature of matters that need to be sorted out beforehand, making such arrangements would be time consuming and require substantive negotiations with the authorities of a host nation. In fact, it would be too late if the tribunal tries to make such arrangement after it decides to function elsewhere in a particular case. While the option of exercising its function elsewhere has long been available in its statute and rules, neither the tribunal nor the ICJ has ever exercised this option so far. One of the reasons for this may be the lack of prior arrangements. In any case, therefore, if any international court or tribunal is serious about exploring this option, the first thing it should do is to make necessary arrangements to function as well with an interested host nations. This is the rationale for the model agreement for the provision of facilities for the tribunal. In order to activate Article 1, Paragraph 3 of the statute, the tribunal has long been well aware of the need to conclude such an agreement with a country which has sufficient capacity to accommodate the needs of judicial proceedings of the tribunal. tribunal. Dear colleagues, the origin of the model agreement between Singapore and the tribunal dates back to 2007, when a regional workshop was held in Singapore. Following the workshop, consultations took place between the president of the tribunal and the government of Singapore regarding the possibility of concluding an arrangement concerning the provision of facilities should the tribunal consider it desirable to sit in Singapore. While both sides agreed in principle to the mutual benefits of making such arrangement, consultation did not lead to a serious endeavor to negotiate such arrangement. In the meantime, the tribunal decided in March 2009 that the question of possible arrangements concerning the provision of facilities should be discussed on the basis of a draft standard arrangement to be prepared by the registry of the tribunal and that a decision on the conclusion of an arrangement would be taken 
on a case-by-case -case basis. After considering various drafts prepared by the registry, the tribunal adopted in September 2010 a draft model agreement concerning the provisions of facility. This draft model agreement was expected to be a template for the tribunal in its future negotiation with any interested state. In this regard, I can say that tribunal has done its own preparation to activate Article 1, Paragraph 3 of its statute. Another significant step was taken in August 2015 during a visit to Singapore by the then president of the tribunal. During this visit, the president and the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Law of Singapore signed a joint declaration, which stated inter alia that the government of Singapore has offered to assist the tribunal in the provision of appropriate facilities in the event that tribunal considers it desirable that tribunal or its special chamber sit or otherwise exercises its function in Singapore. The joint declaration also stated that the tribunal and the government of Singapore agreed to commit themselves to start without delay negotiation on a model agreement. Further to the joint declaration, negotiation between the registry of the tribunal and the Ministry of Law of Singapore for the conclusion of model agreement began in January 2016. In the course of the subsequent four years, three rounds of in-person negotiation took place at the premises of the tribunal in Hamburg. Several rounds of teleconferences followed. Eventually, in October 2019, after three days of intensive negotiations at the premises of the tribunal, the two sides were able to settle all pending issues and the text of the draft agreement was finalized. Dear colleagues, the, the purpose of the model agreement is, as stipulated in Article 2, to establish the terms and conditions under which the government of Singapore shall provide the tribunal with appropriate facilities required for the tribunal or its chamber, including the CBAT dispute chamber to function in Singapore. The model agreement sets out the facilities which the government of Singapore would provide to the tribunal or a chamber. These facilities include a room for the hearings, a deliberation room, meeting rooms, and office space. The model agreement provides for privilege and immunities of the tribunal, including its immunity from legal process and the immunity of its property, assets, and funds from interferences. It also provides for inviolability of the court facility, tribunal's archives, and its communication. Furthermore, the model agreement sets out the privilege and immunity of the members of the tribunal and its officials, as well as that of all other persons involved in proceeding, such as experts, Asian counsel, and advocates. Dear colleagues, now let me briefly clarify a few things relating to the model agreement. First, the agreement signed last year is a model agreement. What it means is this. When the tribunal decides, after ascertaining the views of the parties, that it will sit in Singapore for a particular case, a special agreement concerning all the necessary arrangements has to be concluded between the tribunal and Singapore. The model agreement would form the basis of the special agreement to be concluded and expedite, expedite the process of concluding the special agreement. 
With the model agreement put in place, I believe that the special agreement could be concluded in a prompt and timely manner. Second, another thing I want to clarify is that the model agreement in no way undermines the fact that the seat of the tribunal is the free and Hanseatic city of Hamburg. The tribunal is pleased with the fact that its permanent seat is in Hamburg, and we are always grateful to the city of Hamburg and the Federal Republic of Germany for their generous support for and commitment to the works of the tribunal. In fact, this is message to my German colleagues. The model agree agreement simply opens a new option and flexibility in venue, which I believe could optimize the role of the tribunal and thus further its contribution to the peaceful settlement of ocean disputes. Third, with the recent widespread acceptance of modern technology in international judicial proceedings due to the pandemic, you may wonder if the value of the model agreement may have been somewhat reduced. It is true that the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has affected the working methods of international courts and tribunals, including that of International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. As you may know, last year, the tribunal decided to hold its various meetings, including the hearing and judicial deliberations in a virtual and hybrid format, in which some participants take part in person and others remotely. To this end, the tribunal amended several provisions of its rules, namely Articles 41, 74, 112, 124, and 135, whereby the tribunal may decide, among others, to hold meetings or hearing entirely or in part by video link. However, I want to stress that such decision should be taken only as an exceptional measure for public health, security, or other compelling reasons. Therefore, when the pandemic is under control, as it should be hopefully soon, the tribunal should return to the normal mode of operation. It is particularly so with the hearing the principal function of which is to provide an opportunity, in fact, the only opportunity in lengthy judicial proceedings for direct confrontation of the parties before an open court. Certainly, modern technology may be able to replace many things, but the value and benefit of in-person hearing as the direct exchange of arguments between the parties and its close scrutiny by the bench may not be easily replaceable. Dear colleagues, the model agreement is an instrument that not only promotes dispute settlement under the UNCLOS, but also caters for the needs and specificities of different regions. I believe that in the long run, the Singapore ITLOS model agreement could help make the outlook for international judicial practice more balanced and diversified. As I said a year ago at the signing ceremony, the Singapore ITLOS model agreement may serve as an incentive for states from other regions to contemplate the benefits of concluding similar arrangements with the tribunal. Establishing a network of model agreements extending to various regions of the world will help lower the barrier for many states to avail themselves of the services of the tribunal, thus making the tribunal a truly global court and promoting peaceful resolution of international disputes. Dear colleagues, in closing, I'm pleased that the tribunal was able to conclude its first model agreement 
with Singapore. The tribunal could not have found a better partner for this venture than Singapore in terms of its geographical location and accessibility, its capacity to provide high quality logistical and administrative support, its efficiency and good organization, and its support for the work of the tribunal and commitment to international rule of law. With the model agreement, as well as various arrangements made with other judicial institutions, I believe Singapore would emerge as a leading venue for international judicial activities and is expected to play an active role in peaceful settlement of international disputes. The venture Singapore and the tribunal have successfully undertaken is a venture for the future. We did not conclude the model agreement for its immediate use. In fact, we may not have an occasion to invoke the model agreement anytime soon. However, unless we prepare for the future possibilities now, we would not be able to seize an opportunity, even if such opportunity is available in the future. As Mahatma Gandhi said, the future depends on what we do in the present. This brings me to the end of my speech. Thank you very much for your kind attention.